Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Cal Pack Pack and the view from above that I, as the Cal Pack's nicheling goddess, have as I watch benevolently and happily as they conquer this killer island, which so far hasn't been too much of a problem for us, I must say. Armed with Barina claws and with some, uh, occasionally, some pretty powerful ram horns, we are actually doing a very very well at conquering this island, and upon thinking about it, I do think I am willing to allow some of my favorites, I'm talking about you, Silk, I'm talking about you, Kisly, to go ahead and have even more children, because the more children we have, especially when we have so much food abundantly available to us, the faster we will be able to initiate the entire conquest of this island, and the sooner we will be able to carry on as the bird flies to the jungle land, what I can only assume is the jungle land, and conquer it and teach those apes a lesson. I am very excited to conquer more of the islands. I didn't know I had such a uh, vicious streak within me, but apparently it can be brought forth by destroying one of my favorite tribes. Ah, so we will carry on today, and I do think we're actually going to be having more children, which is just in time for Kisly, because unfortunately, today is going to be her last day with us, which makes me very sad. She's one of my favorites. I feel like, in her own quiet way, she led this tribe to greatness and glory, just as her father and mother before her wanted her to. So I think that Genesis is going to probably find a new mate. Uh, maybe he can actually become uh, uh, Denise's mate after this. Like, they're having a really hard time having healthy children over there. And Denise and Genesis both already have a few Barina traits. So we'll have to see. But uh, we'll have to see where that goes. We will probably start having more kids, even though I really usually put my foot firmly down at about 20 tribe members. Because it hit me. The more babies we have, the more we can explore. And that got me very excited. So we probably are going to be doing a lot more exploring. All right, Kiro is wandering on over here. Is there a lovely female that he can mate with? Not really. Most of them are closely related to him. There is actually Sakil. Huh. And Kiro, you're a wanderer. Sakil is young healthy enough to leave the nest, not completely healthy. She unfortunately does have doubled up immunity that she inherited from her mother, Denise, and her father, Tarkil. But Sakil, who has been renamed, by the way, we have a few new names for the babies. Sakil, for the firstborn beautiful daughter of Tarkil and Denise. And then Arku, for their son, who has big ears, which apparently is lurking in the recessive traits of this family tree. Very interesting to note that. Uh, and double Barina claws, they are that beautiful white claw that I'm really going for as well. And then we also have a new name for, oh, that's right. I properly renamed Isli to Isli, her, her name that I chose for her, because she is probably going to be the next generation of the tribe. She's probably going to be the next heiress. Uh, we're going to go ahead and give her that rank because she has eight strength. And surprisingly enough, Blink is going to be one of her mates. And I think they kind of have acknowledged that maybe she will have to take other mates to have even stronger children. But Blink is an outsider to the tribe, but healthy enough. And the tribe, or excuse me, the pack, cough, cough, actually is just, you know, intelligent enough to know that it's good to have new blood come in now and then, provide outside perspective and outside genetics for those immunity issues. So we're going to go ahead and allow Blink to take uh, Isli as a mate. They're very happy together, actually. Um, they just, they, they get along well. And so they're going to jump over to the other side of the island, start looking for a nest and try to start conquering this side. We've already conquered this side. I'm not sure if we'll leave anybody back here. We will get rid of that blade of grass before we go. Oh yes, we will. Don, I have a job for you, buddy. In fact, I'm gonna send him, where is the leech? Don, did you, li Don, you literally got a leech. You didn't even start your job, Don. You didn't even start your job and you already got bleached. But I'm actually going to send Don, if he can make it, over to here to get rid of this grass. Because if I forget this is here and we go all the way marching to the other side of the island, we have to turn around and clear it to count as a conquest of the island. Arr, I'm not going to forget you. All right. So let's see. So let's send the, this little group, Isli, uh, running over to the other side where she can be joined by Blink. 
and he's already found some food. So clearly it is a nice abundant area. I'm sure they'll find a nest and begin a new line up there very soon. And then on this side, we have Koi who is quite taken with the occasional fish that she can find uh, flopping along the waterfall here. And her son, Noten, who uh, is just a, a normal explorer. And then Roro over here is really hoping that at some point in the future, he will be able to win back Janai's heart. But Janai is really stubborn. She had an unhealthy child, the spoiled Nisi, who continues to insist on giving birth to the children that she can have with the exceptionally handsome Tarkil, who's going to try to find a little bit more food for his growing family. Ooh. There we go. Good job, Remy. I didn't know you had it in you to do some hunting. But he is uh, the most handsome nicheling in the tribe. And so he really is considered like a prime catch. Should probably be breeding with Isli, to be completely honest. So that may have to happen. Kind of like a royal forced marriage to some extent there. Um, because it would be for the strength of the pack. So they would be willing to put up with it. Uh, just the way that... <laughs> Koi was willing to put up with having a baby too. But uh, Sakil, let's see, she is still young. Oh no, I have left one unattended. Don't die, Arku. The sky is surprisingly free of the vultures for the moment, but stay safe. I think Sakil has a gentle heart and she's a little bit worried about her brother. But I'm hoping we can breed Sakil with somebody, maybe Garu, and we can end up with some healthy children. All right, and maybe I was going to breed her with Kiro? We'll have to see. We'll have to see. Mostly at this point. <clears throat> really, Kiro? You were supposed to eat the meat, not try to dig a hole. Yeah, you're too old for learning new tricks like that. And digging is not a, a offensive attack carnivore trait. I cannot allow this tribe to be digger paws. If you end up breeding in a digger paw, that's one thing. But it will never go in the mutation menu, so there's no point in unlocking it. Tisk, tisk on you. Oh, uh, let's see. And then over here, Silk, that means because I'm I'm ready, Silk. I'm ready for you to have another child, my beloved. Oh, I love Silk. I don't know why. I just want to spoil her to pieces, though. Uh, and Javar, ooh, Javari. Javari and Sakil, two of my favorite lions. Come together and have beautiful children. That's what Nisha's all about, right? <laughs> all right, we're gonna let Lotri go ahead and wiggle her way down here. And so help her, and Kanara will kind of help out. If they can get that rogue to come near them, they're gonna kill him. He's he's gonna he's gonna face her angry, angry wrath. Uh, can we actually? There we go. Yes. All oh, right. You have been avenged, Lothri, for that terrible rogue who came and left you with child. But at least we will have a new member of the pack. He will be loved no matter what he looks like, and if he's healthy enough, maybe he'll even provide some unexpected vital immunity genes that we will need so who knows but Javari I think I have got the perfect sweet natured sweet spoken mate of beauty 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 for you so we'll have to see what we're gonna do with Sakil all right so Sakil you stay there for now we're gonna have so many babies, I'm not gonna be able to keep up with them. And speaking of babies, I do believe that Tsankrar, having just popped in, he really is one to run into rocks for some reason. I'm noticing that's like, <laughs> Tankrar's habit is finding a rock where we didn't know there was a rock. I just imagine he's really sassy and self-assured and kind of pushes his way through everything. Um, but he is actually double burying a Claude. She is double burying a Claude. He just rescued her pride and joy, Hal, who's humiliated because his mother should start treating him like the adult nicheling he is, but she still sees him as the apple of her eye. So she is going to have another baby and it's going to be with Tankrar and we're going to see if it's a healthy child or not. Uh, he has eight, uh, eight attack. She has seven. Woe, woe to any who think they can mess with this little side of the family tree. Are you kidding me? They're so strong. She's going to try to pass on ram horns and oh, anything else. Uh, I mean, they're good on the hind legs. They are good on, we can't, oh, we probably unlocked Nimble Fingers and too bad, so sad, we are not going to do anything with Nimble Fingers. Um, they both already have Berina Claw, so I don't need to try to make that happen. They have fine eyesight. I don't think either of them is short-sighted, so that's not a problem. Uh, 
want round ears, barina ears, big ears, uh, barina snout, poison fangs would be awesome. We need to spend time in other places to unlock some of these other genes. I wonder if there's any, other than the barina genes, I'm not really sure if there's anything else. Like, I mean, okay, the saber tooth fangs and some of the other, like, traits from the ice islands would be fantastic for us. But I don't think anything else could really be added in. So I'm going to focus on like white horns, I guess. And that's just going to kind of be my thing. I try to push on them. Um, and he might be able to pass on, let's do stripes and let's do uh, white horns. And let's see if we can get that in on this, that side of the family. Is that everybody? That's everybody. This is why you keep your tribe small. <laughs> Because you barely move when it gets bigger. It takes forever just to get everybody all lined up. Holy canoodles! I didn't realize we were going to have that many... Whoa! Okay. We went a little overboard. <laughs> New baby! Oh my gosh, you're gorgeous! It's Duke Kirnu, who's going to be renamed. He is actually beautiful. I love that blonde tone. He is very strong, but not very in a strength strong, unfortunately, which is interesting because both Genesis and his mother, who just passed away, I'm going to miss her so much. She was such a gorgeous leader for our tribe. Uh, a moment of silence for her. Also for me to have a sip of tea. <laughs> but it is a little bit unfortunate <clears throat> because she was not able to leave her bones up on the ancestral hill. She sacrificed that opportunity so that Dukirnu could be born safely in a traditional nest. And we're going to go ahead and have his dad stand next to him at least long enough that we'll not finish. He'll, he'll move before we finish the turn. But the longer we're next to him, the less likely he's going to be eaten by a bird. So that was baby number one. I had a lot of babies. Didn't expect to. Here is our rogue-born child, Tataro. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Tataro, instantly born into the family as a servant of Tata. Well, we'll keep an eye on you, little one. I'm sure that that will be quite the adventure. Uh, there's tons of bunnies over here. Is this the friendly barina? This is not a friendly barina. Not a problem. Now he's dinner. <laughs> That's so satisfying to be that strong. This is why the tribe believes in strength, not because they're vicious or bloodthirsty, but the world requires strength at times to protect those you love. The way that Javari was just able to protect his mother and his newborn beautiful sister, oh my gosh, Kwasiri, you are Silk's child and then some. So beautiful. I'm so happy. Kwasiri, Silk, are you passing on some good traits? She is. Okay, so Kwasiri, uh, is just so oh my gosh that's so pretty i'm so happy right now <laughs> so we have a beautiful child from silk line which makes me quite content and we'll go ahead and definitely keep an eye on this little one she is like instantly one of my favorites uh let's see we're going to grab this food whilst we can let's cut down this berry bush Hero is scooching about. Rimi is really old. I don't think she's like the ancestral what hill. She doesn't really care. So she's just going to help us clear away some grass. She's kind of a placid, ho-hum sort of person herself. Uh, Giru, I think, might be a good mate for Denise. And Denise is getting older. And she just had another sickly yet gorgeous child named Lalami, which is actually a beautiful name. Huh. I feel like Denise should go ahead and have children with other nichelings. But at the same time, I mean, she's really happy. Her children are all clearly going to end up being sickly. She shares too many genes with this group. Um, but Giru, I'm going to send Giru. Where was I sending him? Was I sending him over here for any particular mate? Uh, no, he was with his mom. Where'd his mom go? Oh, his mom got pregnant with from the rogue. That's right. Giru, mm, maybe he'll kind of, I'm going to start swinging him around to the other side of the tribe. Oh, there's a very uh, important medical bush there. And maybe he'll find a mate from along this line. And I'm actually going to start sending Sakil over here because I'm just really hoping and crossing all of my fingers and claws that she and Javari will be good mates because I like that lineup. <laughs> it's that simple. I like that lineup. And Denise is still sick. She is very sick. Unfortunately, that's her lot in life. But she is very proud of her babies. 
and Tarkil cannot keep away. Uh, even though this is a mistake and they, they somewhere in their hearts probably know this is a terrible mistake, they continue to give birth to children who are sickly, but they're just too in love. This is a tragic love story with one of my best males being told here. So there's that. So let's see, that was, oh my gosh, yes, yes, you guys, our very first Berina, Berina, you, you little, your boy, for some reason I thought you were a girl because like you can't really see the mane, but we have a male Berina baby, oh my goodness, I'm sorry Roro, I think that Tankrar actually had some credit to where his sassy self was. But we have now unlocked, thanks to the birth of Taduk here. Oh my gosh, whoops, I shouldn't have moused over it. Sorry about that, guys. 10 strength. Oh my gosh. Hey, all hands on deck. All hands on deck. This is a big, strong baby. He is like the the kind you put him in, and he's just the, the giant amongst the toddlers of the babies being born. I think that that would absolutely delight these two. I think that Tankrar is even more just completely impossible to be around because he would be strutting around proud as punch that he had one of the strongest sons in the entire tribe, strongest children ever. 10 strength. Oh, I need another sip of tea to handle that. Oh my gosh. But honestly, guys, other than maybe the Verena ears, I can't think of any other traits we really need to make a stronger nicheling. I actually would love to see some of the ice traits on this tribe, and I, that may be a really cool way to go. I'm falling completely in love with the Calpac tribe. But let's carry on. I think Hal is going to, like, just kind of roll his eyes and continue adventuring and continuing conquering this island as the Calpacs are told to do by their ancestors. And I think Roro is going to just, like, resign himself to honor in a different way and instead of romance it will be the honor of expanding our territory which is also awesome all right so let's see meanwhile don get that blade of grass get it destroy that one bush and that one blade of grass don and you will have my eternal thanks uh, another baby that was this beautiful little one over here. I am so in love with Corisi. I hope that Silk has many more beautiful children. I'm really glad I decided to bend my rule of only having like 20. Whoa, where am I? <laughs> Denise, she's like, yes, there's another child within my belly. Oh, look here. Look, the baby is there. No, Denise, the baby is behind you. You're really, you're obsessed with having babies. <laughs> oh my goodness, that was hilarious. All right, so those are all the babies. We did have our beautiful matriarch, unfortunately, pass away of old age. I know that we've got many sickly nichelings because we have an ill-fated romance going on here. Very sad. Um, and meanwhile, we do have an heiress with Isli, who I think will now have to take Taduk as a mate, but also Blink. I have not forgotten that Blink probably has some essential immunity genes that will actually really make a difference for this tribe. There's a rock there, noted. That will really, really make a difference for this tribe. So we do need to have Blink's genes added in. His genes come from Dreamy, uh, who is like just over there, like whatever. <laughs> So his genes come from Rimi, and we definitely need to use them. Robin is almost, I think Robin will be very happy with her life if she can just explore this outer edge a little bit more. She will have contributed to conquering the island with her family. So she's doing a good job. Anybody unattended? Nope, just the parents. All right, so we're going to take a risk. I hate to do it, but Genesis is going to step away from his youngest son, and we're going to see, can we make it? Mmm, getting nervous. Oh my gosh, there's so much illness in this tribe. Unfortunately, this young son is sickly too. He is beautiful as well. It's such a pity. Uh, we're really getting close on some of those genes. Remy has passed away. I think even now she'd be like, eh, whatever. <laughs> even as a pile of bones. I just, I just got that vibe from her for some reason. And we have two new babies. 
a handsome new boy who's not sick? How? What miracle has been wrought upon our heads? All right, Arku, you need to get away from your brother. I'm sorry. Um, he's finally, we finally have a not sick nicheling. Are you kidding me? Lalami might have to risk it with the vultures overhead. That's very exciting. Uh, we'll come back to that. And then we have another baby over here. <laughs> I'm sorry, new Taro. I feel like he, his parents would be a little bit let down because they wanted another Taduk and instead they had the new Taro. So I feel like, I feel like he would feel a little bit, a little bit left out of things, a little bit put out because his parents aren't quite as excited about his, his appearance as they are over Miracle Child Taduk. But Hall, Hall, his older brother, his older half brother will come over and he will teach, he will teach little new Taru the ropes. So I'm not worried about that. All right, nothing. Ooh, there's a whole bunch of fish. I'm not really gonna turn down fresh fish if they're just gonna pop up in front of us. All right, doing some exploring. Who got bleached? Dan, how? You're literally this far on the island and you got bleached. That's just, oh no, did we lose a baby? Oh, thank goodness we did not lose a baby. At least not that I can tell. Did we lose a baby? Not that I can tell. Okay, good. But Dan has done it, you guys. He has destroyed that patch of grass. We will not have to worry about going back and destroying it because we have taken care of it. I am so proud of them. All right, and Robin is going to carry on with... Oh, there you go, Robin. She has a little perch. She can clear away the last of this, and she can retire on this tree trunk. And even though it's not the highest point on the island, I feel like Robin, having made this conquest, her personal conquest in her life, would be proud of what she did. And then over here, we do need to get rid of some of this grass over there. Uh, this is regrowable grass, but this is not. We'll destroy that berry bush. And then we'll get Isli and Blink working on children soon. Roro, it, he's resigned himself and he's working. Man, it's actually harder than you would think to conquer, quote unquote, the island by getting rid of all the grass because there's a lot of grass. Holy canoodles, is there a lot of grass? Okay, hang in there. Hang in there. Okay, Genesis is going to guard his son until the last moment where he will have to dive out of the way. But Dukir New has almost made it to juvenilehood where he will be safe from the birds. Speaking of safe from the birds, let's see. Kira, come to the adventure. And we'll have Sakil actually come over and gather up some food. And Jero... Jeru... I might send him further that way. We have a lot going on. All right, yeah, Kiro, I think you're good with the kid having. You don't really have any of the Barina traits, so we'll move him over there. And then we have got uh, the little the little baby, and he and his mom grab those bunny that bunny meat, and we'll dive up here so we can return to the loving arms of Silk, the beloved mate of Kanar, and they can continue having beautiful babies I can coo over. And Javari, I feel, would want to stay close to his sister and kind of like watch over her and protect her. And then Sakil will show up and they'll have another wonderful romance and it'll totally work out. Totally. It has to. I demand it. All right, there we go. And then, uh, yeah, we'll leave a little chorus. He can jump up here so she can get a good view of everything. I'm so glad she's not sickly. All right. And then meanwhile, uh, Lothri, I think she'll jump up here too. Keep an eye on things. Keep an eye on the squirt little Tataro that I think that she's actually warmed to now that he's been born. And let's see. All right. To kill you and your mate. What are you doing over here with Denise? So Lalami needs to live. She needs to live and stay away from her brother. Uh, so we kind of need to switch spots over here. So Lalami is going to scooch over here. Her mom is going to scooch over here. We're going to have another baby. Then Tarkil is going to dive this way and he finally has a healthy son that we can actually send out into the world. Um, and he's going to watch over his healthy son, basically. So there, we've swapped out the babies and Arku is old enough to carry on the family legacy of being able to search out the land around them and conquering it. So he knows that he's a little bit weaker than others. Uh, well, at least he's more sickly. He's not very weak at seven strength, but we're going to send him out and he's going to help conquer some of the land so that he can prove that his parents' love was not a mistake. All right. I think that covers everybody other than Genesis, who's just going to need to scooch over before, before, okay, let's do this. Let's do this. I'm going to do this. Okay. We're scooch Genesis over and I think that's good. And <gasps> we had a 
Ooh, my oh me. All right, guys. We've we're losing some of our elders, which is unfortunate. We have some wounded by leeches of all things. Um, we have got tons of sickly nichelings, unfortunately, and we just welcomed into the family yet another sickly baby. I feel like uh, Kudukir here was a fluke for the family. We have a big Berina who is trying to eat Arku. Not gonna happen, Arku. Not gonna happen. And we had one more baby. Where is it? And let's see. Behind this grass, we're about to find out. Is it another Berina jawed child? Or... Is it another disappointment for them? Oh my gosh, yes! Von Von has been born. He will be given a new name and we continue to create some exceptionally strong nichelings who shall help us conquer this island. So let's get to it next time, guys. I am pretty tickled as punch. We are really seeing this tribe start sprawling in all directions. We have conquered about half the island, I would say, and we're going to conquer the other half in record time. So I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.